From Cape Town to Mossel Bay in the third in the long haul series, this one proudly brought to you by Deer Strand and Tip Top Jewelers. This time the mechanics had a lot of work to do. In fact, their work stretched into the wee hours of the morning and that included the scrutineering too. Basically what the scrutineering is all about is to make sure that all safety equipment on board the boat, that the boat meets up to standards and specs as laid down by the governing body and to make sure that the engine is also within specs as the per governing body. And once that was completed, it was the team briefing. Um, quite a bit. It's not going to be a fast race, I think, as everyone um, expected it to be. The wind has picked up a little bit. It's picked up a bit of chop on the water. Um, so I think it's going to be down to what choice of prop you take at the end of the day. Looks like it could be a, quite a tough day for us. It's obviously, the wind is causing a bit of bumps and, and holes. I'm just going to go out there and ride as hard as I can. Uh, I'm out of contention for number one. So if I can help my partner, Rowan Hawks, I'll do my best to see what I can do for him. Oh, I just want to go for consistency. You know, we're lying second overall in the Long Haul Championships. Uh, Ludolf is leading it. Um, so, you know, today I just want to settle for being consistent and just finish it and, you know, hopefully finish in the top three. And, uh, you know, that'll move us right up the log again into a top three uh, overall, which is what we're looking for. You know, we lost three nationals along the way, so uh, we had a lot of points to make up. And I think, you know, it's just, I just want to be consistent and, you know, get out at the top. And For me, I think a good race, uh, a solid race, uh, stay, keep, up, keep, keep it upright. Not really necessarily go for a win. If we're comfortable, we'll push it as far as we can. We're not going to try and go over the edge. I think the pressure is a bit more on Rowan than it is on me. Um, use Roy to pull me, um, try and stick with him. And uh, hopefully we'll just get to the end of the race. So that's a priority to finish, first of all. I'm, I'm winning the long haul series too, so, you know, it's a case of, I, I'm here to try to do it all. And, uh, and these conditions today are actually, I favour I favor these conditions as opposed to being flat, so, but I think today will be a good race. I prefer it when it's rough, so we'll see what happens. Your boot was very confident about the conditions, saying he's looking forward to racing like this as uh, the men fill up the boats, and uh, conditions here would play a very serious part. Yeah, absolutely. Coming back to Zane there, um, he obviously had secured the championship already, so the pressure was off him for the overall championship, but still on to win the Long Haul Series Championship. A flip right in the middle of the start already, so that tells you it's going to be a long and very hard day, and when they call it Long Haul, they mean Long Haul. Yeah, this is going to be a real tough one. Conditions by far the worst Long Haul that we've had of the season, and really a tough event coming up. This Hunter's Gold boat, that's the one that took that flip early on, so water in the motor, and that's the end of their first heat in Mossel Bay. Up ahead, 90 kilometers, starting in Mossel Bay, two beach stops, one at Grootbruck and one at Kleinbruck, and then back, and more trouble here, too. On the start, we went out, and uh, there were a couple of big waves. We negotiated the first two, and then there was a very big one on, on its way. I hung back for it to break. And as it was about to break, boat number three came across, rode right over my nose, popped my boat, and obviously the boat uh, was uncontrollable and the wave took us over. You can tell that he was rather chuffed about that. Uh, nonetheless, out of 34 boats that started two already out of the race, and we haven't started properly. And uh, very, very difficult conditions. Also hard to read the water like this. Very hard because you've got no consistent run through the water. It's all over the place. There's no different swell in one direction around the boys and back out on the, the lovely sight of Mossel Bay. However, these men would not have noticed that. They've got the eyes ahead on uh, the water, trying to see exactly what's ahead for them. And this Hunter's Gold rib boat, they looking like they're going very nicely, despite the conditions. Yeah. Henning knows the water, he knows the area. He's been there many times in the Transagullis as well. So it's a big favor for him. So he'll have that at hometown sort of advantage on the water. But yeah, very tough conditions. Of course, even worse for these boys because they're in there in those inflatables and the body now really does take really. a bounding. And remember, Lionel is right up to the front there contending for the SA Championship, so everything will be on him now to really make it work for himself. Oni, I just want you to have a look at that shot. Look what the co-pilot has to go through. I mean, it is really, really tough conditions out there. You have to really be concentrating continuously, working hard at the boat, Aussie champion David Bonnet and his co-pilot Etienne Barnett, they really are taking strain, working hard, but that's what this is all about. And the jostling the body takes there really takes a huge pounding. 
Now this is where your equipment uh, preparation really comes into account and obviously the fitness of your team. Coming off the top of that wave and right on the beach here is not too far away from uh, those breakers and about even further in. This is the first beach stop at Groot Brak. In really big surf conditions as the guys come into the beach, really having to concentrate, make sure that they don't take any stupid chances coming into the beach. So Turin and Pratt in that Hunter's Gold boat, multiple Trans Agalis champion, and in fact three years in a row, so the consecutive Trans Agalis champion, and they flying at the front. A long run for the co-pilots now because you can't get the boat much closer to this and that in itself is energy sapping. Very much so, Ani. Very, very much. Takes it right out of the co-pilots and, and bear in mind that the co-pilots have to work so much harder in these conditions. Car spares as Lionel Ball and Stefan Hichu back in the boat and chasing hard after Turin and Pratt. But uh, the gap there already substantial. Waiting for first arrivals at Kleinbrock, the second of the beach stops and the ribs flying out there. And of course, when they lift out of the water like that, take a lot more air, so they take a while longer to get down too. That's right, and remember what we're dealing with here, Arnie. We're dealing with 1.6 tons of boat coming, crashing down on the water. We're uh, looking at the chalk air boat there, Arnie. Um, nicely well positioned. Guys looking very relaxed and comfortable on the boat. No pressure on them whatsoever standard class leader at this point but just look at the swell and this is at the back at the start of the breakers on the way now to Dyer's Beach and uh, the refuel stop some of the support crews waiting there very anxious yeah Anit, this is also where it becomes very technical um, with the fuel stops and changeovers and um, the guys really have to keep the head in these conditions Talking about keeping your head trouble for Hawks and Wright, who were in the running for the South African Blueprint Championships together with Ball and Hichu, but Hawks and Wright's challenge came to a premature end. Ah, we're running with the leaders across the bay, and uh, the motor just starts getting water when it's so rough like this and runs on two cylinders. We nearly didn't even make it out of Groot Brak to the big waves, so there's no way we can carry on with the motor running on two cylinders. So the Blueprint South African Championship decided early on. Yeah, it's close, but um, these things happen, you know, we're just going to come back next year and get it from the start. That's all we can do. Now back out to the water and yet another one of the beach stops. This uh, is Turin sending his uh, co-pilot Leonard Pratt off at breakneck speed. Yeah, Arnie, the pilot, the co-pilot's really taking a bit of strain now. It's really getting time. Um, just also coming back to uh, Roan being out there. Remember also now, Lionel's still out on the water, and he won't be aware of the fact that Roan is out. So he's going to still be pushing pretty hard. So, yeah, this is where it becomes quite technical as well. 1999 South African champion Roy Ball and Barney Grenier making their stop on the beach. And followed by the men in second place, Uber and Tiat in their Bible boat. And you just also to mention, yeah, these beach stops, you know, it's so critical also how far do you go up on the beach with the boat? Because, you know, the co-pilot's still got to get out the boat, the pilot's got to turn the boat and restart the, the race again. So very crucial also how far you actually beach, because you could get stuck on the, on the sand or you could be too shallow in the water. And the leaders in the standard class, Marx and Leroux, they're making their way up the beach at Grootbrak for their beach changeover. And a quick check on conditions, back out again. Would have been some refueling done now. There's a little bit of technical trouble there. Yeah, probably making a change there. Maybe uh, the tank will do so. Remember, the conditions are really tough. The boats are really taking a hammering here. I just want you to look how close the guys are running to the shore in some conditions also. Now back out and trying to hit the waves in exactly the right spot, and that is an art and a science all by itself. Absolutely. You've got to make sure in these conditions that you square onto the wave. Don't try to do anything silly and run off to the side or something, because that could cost you the race. One little flip here, and it's all over. These men were trying not to think about that. Blom and Van Sale, the winners in Cape Town, a little bit further down in the field than what they want to be in the standard class. Beautiful aeronautics. Yeah, lovely to see. The thing is also, Sorry, do you see the guy waving there trying to show that the chopper must stay back because he gets such a down draft from the chopper that can sometimes throw the boat right over. Talk Air back on their way now to Mossel Bay. And uh, 
here's a neck injury of sorts, and that's not nice to see, but again, part of the sport as we see car spares racing. Also having a word or two with a chopper. Just been informed that uh, they've won the title, and therefore, very, very happy indeed are Ball and Hichu. Yeah, it's a nice feeling to know that you've got it in the bag and the pressure's off. And then it's to, to keep it going and to keep it upright and just finish the race, basically. And in these sorts of conditions, even that is a very serious challenge. Yeah, that's a task on its own. Ball and Ichu having made their uh, stop, their next beach stop, back out again on their next lap. 90 kilometers of very hard racing. You know, on the outset of, of, of the racing, you know, my brother was chatting to me just before the start of this race, and he was saying to me, you know, what should I do? What are you, what's your advice? And I was saying to him, you know, the whole, the whole thing about this whole racing is, is not to try win every single lap. It's that you keep your, your whole composure and keep it together, and you win the whole overall event. It's, that is the whole thing, is to not lose your, your picture and your focus, but to try win the whole event, not to be flat out into it continuously. So it's all about consistency. That's it. Rudolf Turing and Leonard Pratt enjoying a massive cushion at the front. You know, he's a master out there. You know, he knows this coastline so well. He's so well prepared and um, really lovely to see. It's an absolute joy to watch him along this section of beach. And of course, he knows this part of the ocean because uh, three-time Transa Gullis champion and the ribs. In Blau guiding his boat through the breakers and well in control at the front of the rib class. some serious air there. It just shows you what, what wind you're also dealing with. I mean, you just get a bit of airborne, and if you're not properly in line or the boat's at an angle, it's going to throw you over. And this is Turin, and uh, the crew just behind them. Hubert also chasing very hard. Klaassen for Fur, and uh, they're calling it a day. That looks like there's one or two sore ribs there as well, on top of some technical trouble. The preparation on your on yourself as well, you know, you have to be really, really, really fit. You have to spend a lot of time in the gym and obviously a lot of time in the boat. I mean, these guys prepare for this, you know, months in advance, doing runs out at sea 20, 30, 40 kilometers at a time. So this secures Turin and Pratt, the South African Long Haul Championship. A wonderful performance by the duo. And this is at Grootbrug. Nice to see the co-pilots having a good little tussle there. And back out now, Hubert chasing very hard and taking a completely different yeah. line here, Evo. You see, once again, um, he made the decision to run close on the shoreline to look for the, the, the calmer li line. Um, Rudolf obviously opting to go further out. N nice to see that, you know, it's nice to see the guys opting and not just following each other. Hubert and Tiart, they were a long way behind and they've made up a fair amount of ground, if uh, I can use that term. And uh, this is Turin and Pratt now going into Kleinbrock for yet another beach stop and now they are flying along. You have to get behind the surf or to run in front of the surf, that's always the question, but to run in front of the surf you have to be so much in control of the boat. You have to know the coastline. I mean, he has a good shot. Look at Rudolf running across the beach section. Look how close he is to the rocks. I mean, I don't know, this guy's amazing. Taking a few chances here, very close to the rocks. Just notice how he rides the waves. Make sure that he's either in front or either behind. There's one of the few waves that he rode over, but that's a smallish one, so he could take his chances there. This is the beach stop at Kleinbrock, and again, it's uh, Leonard Pratt who does the sprinting. You can well imagine now, your body's taken a pounding. It's like uh, being in there with Mike Tyson for a good 30 rounds odd. And then they say, well, would you do us a wind sprint of about 100 meters through water on top of it all? No, it's um, really a curveball. On the way back out now, Dyer's Beach is up next for their next beach stop. Kleinbrock oh, oh and uh, Tiart. Now this is really a test for the co-pilots because clearly you, you can't really find energy and you really just have to drag yourself to that flag. And 
what is remarkable here is we see that prop just uh, catching a little bit of sand at the startup is the waves are getting bigger and bigger surf is getting more angry and conditions worsening now by the second absolutely yeah you can see a real real good look at the surf you must know when you're coming into the surf the guys cannot even see the flags they've got no idea so they've got to pick up landmarks to make sure that they're coming at the right areas and obviously safety also being a big factor not to ride over any competitors leaving the actual beach area ball and hiku coming through but that's one of the big points so you'll see here that sometimes as they come down to the beach stop the troughs and the dips in the water so deep that you cannot see another boat in there and it's hard to believe but they disappear completely totally disappear one of the fuel bladders at uh, Dyer's Beach being run out Fuel being a big factor in the racing nowadays, um, nice to see that the organizers and sponsors of the event are actually coming forward now and sponsoring the fuel for the complete event, making it better for all the competitors so that the fuel is consistent. A slightly more fair arrangement as far as that is concerned. And uh, the surf churning up, it's becoming more and more windy. That makes it very tough too. Uber and Tiat and that Bible boat. Still running in second, but it now seems that Turin and Pratt have got them exactly where they wanted them. They're building the gap, and they're away. This is uh, the former Australian champion, Bonnet and Burnett. At this stage of the race, all the guys are just thinking about is that checkered flag, because your body is really, really exhausted now. It's been continuous pounding out there, and really tough on the body. Beach stop at Kleinbrach now. The DD plant eye crew, oh, and you can tell that that is hard running now. The old body is creaking and it's Aina. Co pilot there, Lyndon, really looking pretty strong, taking his time. I'm not feeling too uncomfortable. I think our uh, preparation good, things are looking well. Rimpy Ackerman and his fuel change, standard class champion there. Until it's very frantic. Clayne Brock again, Leonard Pratt with yet another change and he's still looking very strong. Rimpy Clayne Brock is blijkbaar een van die rofste stoppunten. We zijn al tien boten reeds wat onttrekken en ik denk ons kan het grootelijk zo schrijven van die rove toestanden. Indeed, those rough conditions prevailing and more and more of the boats and the pilots, exhausted co-pilots, calling it a day. Chalk Air now in the lead and the standard class. The preparation for these events is, is really critical. There is what everybody's looking for. So Ludolf Turin and Leonard Pratt in that Hunter's Gold boat with all the years of Trans Agulis experience bringing it home to take that checkered flag and all lost for Ackermann and Gulumi, the defending South African champions there. And if I could just say, um, really a good crowd of sportsmen, those two, a good team, been together for a long time and always been up there. So yeah, good, good riding from them. Roy Ball, they've had to haul that boat out of the water. They're calling it a day too and uh, the conditions taking its toll. Chalk Air, the winner in the standard class. After the first lap we finished, we picked up our markers and the second lap we'll just ride consistently just to keep the boat upright and uh, not to throw anything away. And uh, the result is you get a first, so, yeah. You know, Ani, it's, it's so nice to see my brother walking away and winning the SA Championship. Um, absolutely super. Um, I, didn't, I must say, I didn't think he would do it in, in such a short space of time, but he's been putting a lot of work into it, and congratulations, well done. Sean Knecht and uh, Collins then, the victory there to them, and Turin and Pratt, they take the P750 class with that two and a half minute victory over Ubar and Tiat. And the winners in the rib class, Blau and Stockenfast.